Hi and welcome to the next episode in my Citroen Relay van build series. Uh, in this episode we're going to start on the bed frames and the beds and try and get that sorted out. And uh, hey, the weather's taken a turn for the worst. Look, hat's out. Ugh, I don't like the cold. So as I have uh, mentioned, uh, you know, many times throughout my uh, build series, I am using the uh, IKEA Scorva Midbeam uh, method of doing my uh, my bed. So I've got all three top ones in now, as you can see, and uh, uh, they're not actually fixed yet, but uh, you know, just offered into place. And for the top bunk, in order to uh, keep the height down as uh, as as low as possible without a dirty, great big fat bed frame under underneath here, I'm just going for these uh, bed slats that uh, that come from uh, from IKEA. I've just lobbed the end one off of the pack just for my uh, sort of test piece, and uh, my measurements luckily have worked out uh, quite well because that sits nicely sort of halfway across the beam uh, there not over the sticky label you idiot but there we go that fits nicely there to the to the middle and then this one uh, from the middle there comes across and uh, will fit like that and uh, yeah I got a bit of an overhang there uh, because of course this uh, this end beam that's as close as I could get it to the end of the van because the end of the van sort of pokes in uh, slightly so something that needs a 90 degree uh, you know square um, end to it and this curve um, was was never going to work so that's as close as I could get so I need to do something to uh, strengthen uh, strengthen this end here um, on this overhang you know nothing we haven't uh, nothing we haven't tackled before in this uh, van build series I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do yet but it will be all right I'm sure we'll come up with some ingenious method and uh, when the doors are shut, let me just grab that one. Oh, Christ. <sighs> when the doors are shut, that comes to uh, to there with uh, about an inch or so uh, clearance, uh, which is pretty well bang on my sort of measurements, really. So that's worked out perfectly. So happy with that. Just need to uh, figure out what to do with this end here, just to kind of strengthen that up a bit might put some brackets under here and uh, and a piece of timber here and make up like a little frame or something don't know we'll uh, we'll work on that as we go along so anyway that's uh the, the top ones uh top ones in um haven't put the bottom ones in yet because i need to get in there to be able to work so i'm going to concentrate on the top one first and then do this one uh afterwards so let me go around to the uh the workbench or glass top old uh, garden table for, uh, in actual fact look and the glass is still in one piece amazing so there's my first set of um, of slats and uh, I've already pre-marked and measured those and I've just run a pencil line along here to uh, uh, to know where to cut drill my holes because what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually screw these down into the um, into those mid beams um, yes, it's going to lose a little bit of its uh, spring because they're not going to be able to move particularly. But because we're using a, you know, a reasonably thick mattress on there, I don't think that's the end of the world. So in my drill, I have prepped up my hole cutter and uh, counter sinker kind of all in one job there. So nothing else for it but to uh, drill these holes. Right, there we go, that was straightforward enough. Now, screw-wise, I've got a couple of choices here. I could either use the, uh, can you see that? Yeah, just about. Um, I can either use the uh, self-drilling type, um, or I can use the sort of fairly standard pan head screw, but for these, of course, I'm gonna need to drill a little pilot hole. So I'm gonna give that little bad boy a whirl first, and hope those scorver beams aren't too, uh, too uh, hard because uh, that will be uh, much easier than all that pilot hole drilling and flapping about. So let's give those a try first, and that's that's the old uh, plan B if that doesn't work. Right, okay, got my slats uh, sort of spread out, uh, you know, reasonably uh, spaced along the old uh, scorver beam. So let's uh, see if we can get a screw in or not. 
as the case may be. I'm just going to pick one at random really, I'm not going to uh, bust my ass over which one I try first. Ooh, ah. Oh yeah. It, uh, it yanked on them at the start there as you saw, but it's uh, it's gone in nicely and, uh, and that's A-OK. -okay. Um, probably want to do something with the underneath in actual fact because now of course I can feel that screw poking down and from underneath the bottom bunk you're going to see all those screws lined up which might look a bit uh, unsightly but uh, still never mind not the end of the world is it you know stranger things have happened so uh, yeah let me uh, carry on along and uh, get the rest of these uh, screwed in and then uh, We'll come back to you. Three weeks later. Well, it's, it's now got to be, uh, I don't know three weeks later from when I started the bed frames maybe a bit more because uh, the the whole family uh, got struck down with COVID um, I got it first and then uh, you know Julie then uh, passed it on to uh, to, to both kids and uh, wifey is uh, looking a bit pasty at the moment as well so uh, so we're all going through the ringer a little bit so uh, there's been a bit of a delay on the bed frames as you as you'll appreciate uh, but uh, you know things are slowly returning to normal again so it's time to uh, continue on so I thought rather than start a new video we'll just uh, pick up from uh, from where I was on the uh, on you know uh, I don't even know what I'm saying now from from earlier on for, which for me was three weeks ago which for you was uh, literally like 30 seconds ago I, I appreciate that for those of you that, um, that that haven't had it yet, trust me when I say you 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 don't want it. You you really don't. It's it's, it's weird and strange and awful. Um, so just very briefly, just uh, in case you're, you're interested in this, as a as a very overweight 49 year old that uh, should have been in serious trouble. So uh, so all I can say to that is thank Christ for vaccines, really. And if you're not vaccinated, you're a bloody idiot. But. Uh, because I'm still here to uh, tell the tale and uh, and you know all the odds suggested that I should be uh, in serious problems but anyway so it started um, uh, when I was uh, cleaning the windows funny enough inside I'd found a bit sh bit off for a couple of days and uh, had a bit of a cough come on but uh, I'd just had a sort of cold a, a couple of weeks before and uh, I thought, oh Christ, this is this bloody cold coming back again. Uh, not to worry. And uh, I was cleaning the windows and I was in the kitchen and uh, and uh, it suddenly dawned on me that uh, I couldn't smell the, the, the window cleaner, the window lean. So I turned to wifey and I said, can you smell that window lean? Or is it just me? She said, yeah, it's really strong. You know, typical window lean smell. It's very distinctive. I went, do you know what? I can't smell that at all. So I got right up close to it. No, I can't smell that at all. Oh dear, that's a bit weird, isn't it? So luckily we had some lateral flow tests in the house and I uh, did one of those and uh, oh, two red lines straight away as bright as, uh, bright as a button. I thought, oh crap. So I uh, did a PCR test and sent that off and then got pestered and pestered and pestered and pestered by those bloody test and trace bastards. But uh, anyway, eventually uh, did the 25 minute phone call with someone from the other side of bloody Kazakhstan or where, you know, yeah, anyway, that's hard work, isn't it? And, uh, and just sort of settled in at home for 10 days and uh, thought, well, let's just wait and see what happens and hope for the best. But luckily it passed uh, fairly uneventfully. Um, Got uh, got this loss of taste and, and smell, which is really odd. That's bizarre, that is. And uh, and sleeping at night, it uh, it felt like um, you know when you lay down, like someone's just sort of you know 
crept into your bedroom and, and just sort of just sort of placed a, a bag of building sand across your, t your 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 chest, so you felt kind of heavy chested and a bit kind of <gasps> you know for <coughs> oh yeah cough still there. Not not to the point where you think, oh dear, I better ring someone and, and get that sort of, you know, escalate that. Um, but certainly, you 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 know you had COVID and you know uh, it was that was one of the symptoms. Uh, that lasted about uh, two or three days and then that subsided. And after about three or four days, the old smell and taste came back. Um, but I've still got the the residual bit of cough going on, and. Uh, still some three weeks later just feeling tired and worn out and lack of energy to do anything really and uh, even just you know going up the stairs i mean yes i know i'm a 49 year old fat bloke and going up the stairs kind of puffs you out anyway uh, but this is kind of you know supercharged being puffed out you get to the top of the stairs because we got a three-story house so going right to the top on the third story for a pair of socks or something by the time you get up there you're thinking oh bloody blimey you know that sort of feeling but uh hopefully that will uh, improve over time um i don't know whether this affects lots of people that have had covid or whether this is just me it, it might just be me i don't know but um the one bit of help and advice and support that the nhs don't seem to offer is one bit that i think perhaps they should offer or should think about and that's this you're told by uh, test and trace that you have to self-isolate for 10 days not go out not leave the house not do anything blah 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 we, we you know we've heard all that before we know what that's all about and you duly decide yeah okay I'll, I'll do that that's fine but thoughts come into your mind while you're doing that and you think someone gave this to me someone out there I don't know. I was the first in the family, so I can't blame it on a family member. Although the kids, you know, clearly got it from me, so we, you know, we can trace that very easily. But somewhere, somewhere out there in 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 the world, uh, well, in Wiltshire, because I haven't been very far lately. Um, in some situation, I, I've been given that by somebody in a shop or something like that. In fact, it's got to be a shop because I think that's the only places I've really been. I've never been, been or done anything else. So somewhere along the line in a shop, somebody who was positive for, for coronavirus uh, was out and about and, uh, and gave that to me. So you think to yourself, hang on a minute. Why am I busting my ass isolating for 10 days when others don't seem to give a shit, clearly? Um, and those are sort of dark thoughts that go through your mind. Uh, where you're sat at home feeling like crap because someone's passed it on to you. That's something I think NHS ought to think a little bit about because that I think is probably the best course of action to stop the spreading above anything is to uh, is to make people want to uh, to stay at home. Uh, not not tell them they have to because people don't listen to that crap. They're not interested. I mean, take the number ten pies. I mean, who's going to listen to anything now after after all that? Um, but I think they need to look at making people want to stay at home and not infect others. Um, that's the biggest hurdle, and that's what they need to think about. Uh, but anyway, enough uh, blah blaring about that. Um, I'm still here, and uh, it's time to crack on with the bed frames again. So uh, let's go around the, the back of the van and uh, have a look see. Right, so here's the top one again. Um, oh, incidentally, it's a bit windy today, so if you get that on the, on the camera, I do apologise, but on these GoPros, I think there's absolutely bugger all you can do with that. Um, but uh, I'll try to shield it as best I can. So, uh, on the uh, on the, the, the previous bit of footage, before my, my COVID rant, uh, you saw me uh, screwing in a, a screw over here uh, to fix um, fix those down. If I get a bit closer, you can now see that I've been all the way along and fixed those in. Um, so that one is now fully secure all the way across. Um, I didn't go, you know, too overboard with, with measuring all these gaps. I just did it by eye and, and roughly spaced them out. You know, life's too short for that nonsense. And, uh, and the ones this side, again, have been um, uh, screwed in uh, here all the way along. 
and uh, at this end they're just sort of hanging off the uh, the end here now I have had uh, you can see a mattress under there look now I have had this mattress up here and had the kids up here and actually um, because of how close really you can get to the back of the van this um, this beam here is is pretty well always right underneath you um, so even though this has got a, a little bit of play here um, the reality is you can't get close enough to the back of the van for that to, to really become a problem anyway so uh, I'm not going to worry too much about support under here all I'm going to think about now and what I need to do is to think about how to fix these so they're so they're not moving um, I could fix through there of course but the trouble with that is I think I'm going to then lose lose a lot of my um, my spring um, in them by um, by screwing through there so I'm in two minds is to uh, is to do that you know drill and countersink through there and screw and screw them down into the scorver or possibly run a, a batten along the end here uh, to fix them into uh, and that batten can basically butt up against the edge ed edge of the vanny side and of course that will uh, that will stop them from uh, from shifting anyway um, I'm just going to give that a little ponder for a moment and then we'll crack on with uh, uh, whatever that plan turns out to be. Underneath here, the bottom uh, bed frame is also uh, in. I've gone a slightly different route on this one because I had a bit more bit more height to play with. And I've used the, uh, the IKEA sort of slatted uh, bed frames. And... Uh, the one uh, furthest away from us uh, is is full length and that fitted in uh, nicely uh, and the one nearest uh, to me here I just had to chop uh, chop the ends off to make it a bit shorter um, I did think about putting something in there but again to be honest because it's so close to the the edge of the bed and uh, that's where your feet are um, I don't think we really need to worry about that too much um, I do need to uh, sort out this end here though because because that uh, that does move um, so it needs to be fixed at that end and also supported at, at this end um, in some way but we'll come to that uh, in a minute we'll come to that in a minute let's uh, let's get the top sorted out first right okay I decided to go with the uh, the piece of batten on the end here in actual fact rather than screw it through into the scorver there uh, so I run a piece of batten all the way along countersunk some little screws in and actually that's done the job perfectly so now it won't move from left to right at all and uh, because it's uh, fixed all the way along here actually it won't even lift particularly very far either so uh, with the weight of the mattress on the top I don't think I'm going to get any uh, any sort of bouncing and, and noise when we're driving along so uh, I think we'll call that a winner winner chicken dinner on uh, that one so the top uh, the top frame is uh, is pretty well in effectively just got to cut the mattress to size because because of the way the van sort of leans in you know very slightly at the top here my mattress is a smidge long uh, so that just needs to be uh, trimmed uh, to fit and then that's all good and uh, there's one other little job to do up here as well which I'll just show you so these are the little things you learn as you go along don't you but uh, my reading lights that I put in up here uh, what seems like a, a very long time ago now are actually going to turn out to be a bit of a bust because by the time you got the, uh, the the mattress in and the height of the pillow in that's going to be right in your head uh, so that actually has turned out to be uh, be crap uh, but luckily luckily um, I did have um, two of these uh, little thin jobbies uh, which I originally got for the kitchen uh, before I fitted the uh, the, the cooker hood and uh, uh, they they were pretty well sort of going spare really so that uh, that's going to work out quite well so what I'm going to do I'm not going to bother filming this because you know what, there's no interest in taking one light off and replacing it with another one uh, but basically I'm going to you know pop these back off because there's a nice wooden batten in behind there and then replace it with these little discs up here instead uh, which have a little uh, sort of touch uh, on and off uh, in the middle there um, just to get that back out of the way so you don't have this uh, aluminium light uh, right on your forehead when you're trying to sleep um, so that's one little job to do but like I say I'm not going to worry about filming that because that's, that's not interesting at all really is it uh, right let's move uh, let's move downstairs 
So when I say I'm going to cut the mattress for uh, for the bunk up above, um, I just got these uh, mattresses from uh, from IKEA. They're about uh, I think nine ten centimeters deep, and uh, if I just uh, unzip this uh, corner here, you can see inside there it's basically just uh, foam. Uh, that's all. Uh, just simple cheap foam mattresses. Uh, that's all we we need in uh, in this van. You know, we're not living permanently in it. If I was, I'd go something a bit more elaborate. Um, but uh, so what we're going to do is, uh, got two of these. Like I say, is uh, take this cover off, then uh, cut uh, cut the end off uh, as required, and then just simply, uh, you know, put the cover back on and reshape it at one end to uh, um, to, to to fit. So that's going to be a nice uh, simple job for uh, for wifey to do. That's uh, going to be her department. You know what it's like. I do wooden screws and wifey does upholstery and all that jazz. Uh, right, let me uh, get this off so we can see what's going on underneath and, uh, and have a look at this bottom one. obviously not going to permanently stay like that it's just up out of the way right so like I said down here I've gone with a different uh, different setup uh, because I had a bit more a uh, bit more height to play with uh, so for a bit more comfort on the bottom bunk here we've gone for these IKEA bed uh, sort of slat uh, setups uh, here uh, which are a bit more a uh, bit more springy in the, in the middle there um, so the one at that end I haven't had to uh, tinker with that just fitted in there just nicely as it uh, as it came uh, this one I've had to chop uh, one slat off and, uh, and and shorten it um, so I've uh, sort of re, re drilled and fit screwed it uh, here by lobbing uh, lobbing the end off uh, hence the uh, greener marker paint you can see there um, so that's all working well the only thing I need to do is uh, support this end here because uh, at the moment when you lay on that basically you're laying on uh, on one two and there's one at that end three of these little thin bits of uh, bits of wood under here because that's the only thing that's touching the scorver so that's uh, that's no good and also it's got a tendency to to want to tip look so uh, I'm going to I think put uh, a piece of timber in this end uh, straight down in that corner to the floor to support the weight there and uh, the same with that end from from that end there straight down in that corner to the floor to support the weight there and then I think all being wow that should be fine because um, if you think about it if you look at the other one and this is the way it's designed and supposed to work is uh, there's actually nothing in the middle at all look You've got uh, these these ends are sat on a piece of timber, which is sat on the score over under there, and the same with that end. You've got a long piece of timber running along, which is sat on the on the score over. So if you support that bit of timber, that effectively is is job done. So I'm going to support it there, support it there, and then we should be all right. Right, I think I'm uh, just about there. So we've uh, put an upright in this corner here. Look which I've uh, pocket holed uh, down in behind in there. Uh, keep that nice and neat. So that comes up and supports the top here. Again, it's pocket holed from behind up in there. And uh, same the other side in there. And then I've put another piece of uh, timber in here, which is pocket holed on the back that way into there. And then also in multiple places underneath here, um, countersunk and screwed up into, uh, into the beam. Uh, so now that has got oh, plenty of uh, of weight on there. Um, I've climbed up in there and given that a try, and it was uh, a okay. I'm not going to uh, do that again on camera, watching this beached whale uh, flop onto a bed and back off again. But uh, you'll have to take my word for it that that uh, that was absolutely fine and did the trick. Um, so I think I'm pretty well just about there on the bed frame front, really. Um, oh, let's get the old ladder in a bit closer. Um, just need to uh, fix uh, fix this one down just to stop it sort of moving about because I've got a bit of a gap here. Look, I, I think what I'll do is just pop a little L bracket on there and uh, screw through into the score of a beam and the same the other side just to uh, stop that uh, flapping about. 
and uh, just in case anybody's interested uh, in this because you know these are the all important dimensions aren't they is uh, with these um, Solway panels on the side and with this little recess you get here let me run a tape measure across there quickly and I'll tell you um, uh, what width I've uh, managed to achieve uh, just bear with me a second Okay, so allowing for the height of a mattress of where you're actually going to be laying, I have uh, 188 centimetres. 188 between the two uh, Solway panels. And uh, I'm 5 foot 11 and, uh, and I fit, uh, you know, just fine in there. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't say I've got oodles of space at the end where my feet are, but uh, but I fit and I don't have to uh, bend my knees, so uh, so that's all good. Obviously, the one on the top is going to be uh, shorter because of the uh, the shape of the van, uh, but we always knew that even you know even when I was uh, doing it, uh, but because that's where the kids are going to be up on the top there, it uh, you know it wasn't uh, wasn't the end of the world. That's going to be all right. And then round on the uh, on the other side of the van, um, this is what we've uh, we've got. So the bed is gonna. Um, you have to just imagine. It's all cocked up because, of course, I still need to cut this top one. But uh, you know, this is where the bed frame comes um, at the side of the uh, the fridge and the, uh, the the rolly door for the for the cupboard there. And uh, I've already mounted my um, ladder. Uh, brackets again that's just on those self drilling uh, screws so if I grab the old uh, Fiamma ladder here that will clip into those it's slightly awkward with one hand but you get the idea right that will slip into there like that and uh, and that comes down nicely into the uh, into the the corridor so to speak and I went for the one two three four rung uh, ladder which is uh, plenty, uh, plenty enough to get to this uh, this top bunk, and then the idea is when uh, when we're not needing it is that will lift off, and uh, I'm just going to put it in the toilet for now out of the way because, uh, like I say, it's awkward one-handed. But that will then, of course, go in my little uh, in my little cupboardy in there um, out of the way. Oh, still need to get the old uh, latch for that, don't I? But uh, you know. All little finishing jobs, isn't it? So there we go. That's how I've done my bed frames. Uh, good, bad, indifferent. I don't know, but uh, that's what I've decided to go for. I suppose it's a bit of a cheat, really, using the IKEA scorver beams and IKEA bed slats and all the rest of it. Um, but uh, you know, it's 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 inexpensive and it does the trick and it works. So uh, you know, it's all good at the end of the day. So I think we'll wrap up that video there. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. Blah 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 blah, and. Uh, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.